Hi, this is lesson 3.2, curve sketching with the extrema and inflection points from Taylor Shaw, calculus extended. So we're going to incorporate our calculus topics into our curve sketching. So if we start off by looking at this curve sketching recipe, we have the following steps for curve sketching. These first six, and mainly the first five, we've done in pre-calculus. You should know all those. Now we're going to enter into 7 and 8. We're going to find out when a function is increasing, decreasing, and the relative extrema, and then also find the concavity and points of inflection. Number one, we already have the first derivative and the second derivative given to you, and this is a rational function, 3x minus 2 all over x squared minus 2x plus 1, and notice that I can factor that to x minus 1, quantity squared. So our domain would be x can't be 1. Vertical asymptote is x equal to 1. Holes, nothing canceled, so we don't have any. And then the x-intercept comes from the numerator, so we'll get x is equal to 2 thirds. Value of x that makes that numerator 0. x-intercept is when x is 0, Looks like I get a 3 over 1, negative 2 over 1, so my y-intercept would be 0, negative 2. End behavior. If you notice, the numerator versus the denominator, the denominator is going to grow very much faster than the numerator for big values of x, and so we're going to get end behavior, horizontal asymptote, of y equal to 0. And then symmetry, we have none because we don't have an even function, nor an odd function. And relative max, well, now we've got to use the derivative to find some of these things out. Our critical numbers will be x equal to 1 because of the denominator, but we're not defined there, so we don't worry about it too much. And then from the numerator, we get that we get the critical number of negative, I'm sorry, positive one third. So now we've got to evaluate what f prime is in this interval right here. So if I plug in 0 into f prime, that will make my numerator here to be 1, and my denominator will be negative 1. So that's going to be a negative overall. If I plug in between 1 third and 1, maybe like 2 thirds, I'm going to get a negative divided by a negative, so that would be a positive. And then if I go over to the other side over here to pick a value like 2, I'm going to get a negative on top and a positive on the bottom, so I'm going to be negative. That tells me that I, my f is going to be decreasing here, this interval, and increasing here, and then decreasing there. So relative maximums, I don't have a relative maximum here, even though my derivative changes from positive to negative because this is a vertical asymptote, so that is a none on relative max. My relative min occurs at one-third, and if you plug that into your f function, you're going to get, and I believe the y-coordinate there on f up here is going to be negative nine-fourths. Now for the point of inflection. If I do the point of inflection, it's very similar to what I just did with the first derivative, but I'm going to do it with the second derivative, find the zeros. And that's just from the numerator here, 6x, and so I'm going to get x equal to 0. That's a possible inflection point. I want to know if it is, but I have to show a change in concavity. So if I go here, I'm going to get x equal to 0. I put it down below. And then I'm going to look at f double prime. Does f double prime change signs? So if I look at the change in sign, if I pick a negative number, the numerator is going to be negative, the denominator is always positive, so I'm going to be negative for f double prime on this side. Positive, positive will be positive on that side. So my point of inflection is 0, negative 2. Now I should do a justification here, and I think that this is always important. This one would be x equal to 0, we have an inflection point there because f double prime changes signs. That's your reasoning for an inflection point. If I go back here for this relative minimum, 
this would be a relative minimum because f prime changes from negative to positive. Those are your justifications. Now let's go ahead and graph, plot some points, and let's figure out the shape of this. So I plotted some information. I plotted a few points here, this one right here, this one here, and then I also plotted my volcano. My volcano is because I have even symmetry on this vertical asymptote. That means that both of them will be either going up or both of them will be going down because I do not change signs when I cross over x equal to 1. Now if I connect some of these things up and I also look at the concavity. First of all, uh, going from left to right here, I know that I'm going to be decreasing. I have to approach this vertical, uh, this horizontal asymptote. So I'm going to be decreasing here. Now if you look at concavity as well, I'm going to be concave down all the way to zero. So I'm curved down, and then once I hit zero, I'm, I have my inflection point. So now I'm going to go to being curved up. This might drop down just a little bit so that I can get this curve up, and then it should become obvious how this shape is. So that's going to be one side. The other side, I'm not going to be crossing the horizontal asymptote probably, so this is just going to be going off in the distance. Approaching like that, notice that I am concave up after one as well. So I'm concave up in this interval and I'm concave up in this interval. Concave down in this interval here. I'm going to give you other curve sketching opportunities where I'm just going to give you information about the first derivative, second derivative, and you have to kind of put these nice little curves in on the graph. Number two, a radical function. Why don't you try to fill in as much of this as you can. I'll do the pre-calculus stuff pretty quick, but pause and see if you can do it yourself and then look at my results and then we'll go through the calculus one either together or you can jump ahead to that too. So here's what we got. Domain all reals. We don't divide by zero so we don't get any of this. This is always positive in the denominator and then if I plug in zero I get zero zero so that would be both the x-intercept y-intercept. Horizontal asymptotes y equal to one to the right, y equal to negative one to the left because I do have that square root function which will always be positive. And the symmetry would be odd. If I look at this, if I take an odd divided by an even, I am going to get an odd. And that's what we have there. And so now the relative max. And so if we do the first derivative, we have it right here. And we're going to set up our number line and walk through this. So I set up my number line and then I look for the critical numbers. Well, when is f prime of x equal to zero? Well, if you look at this thing, this is never going to be zero, so I have none. I don't have any critical numbers. So this number line isn't going to help us, really. All I can tell is that f prime is always positive, so I'm always going to be increasing on the whole interval. If we move to f double prime, f double prime does have a zero. So for f double prime is equal to zero at x equal to zero. So we're going to have an inflection point or possible inflection point. Possible inflection point there at x equal to zero. And if you notice the denominator never changes signs but the numerator does. And so I'm going to go from plugging in a negative number on the left hand side this would be a positive number, and on the right-hand side, it would be a negative number. I put that wrong, so a negative number. So we will be concave up here and then concave down here. It's only going to be a partial, so that's what we're going to try to look for. So I'm going to plot the things that I know, and I have this orientation with the point in the middle and then the two horizontal asymptotes. And then I'm going to be increasing and concave up in this first portion. So it looks like I'm going to come like this. Now it's not fully curved up. It's only a half a curve, but that still is concave up. And then if I look at the other piece, 
I'm going to be concave down but still increasing. So since I'm always increasing, I will not cross that horizontal asymptote. Otherwise, I have to come back down, and that would be decreasing. So it's always going to be between the two horizontal asymptotes and strictly increasing. So let's figure out relative max. Let's finish this up. We have none, none, because there are no critical values. And then I also have a point of inflection at 0, 0, because... What happened? F double prime changed signs. That's your justification for an inflection point. All right, I hope this helps you. I'm always going to, I'm also, like I said, I'm going to give you some information to try to graph these on your own too without necessarily functions like this, but with information about the function. I hope you have a great day. Take care.